The cue to keep your back straight is actually hurting your deadlift, and in fact, rounding your back is a bit of a hack to increase your deadlift strength. If you watch a lot of high-level deadlifters, you'll actually see that they do have somewhat of a rounded back when they're lifting. But this seems to go against that conventional advice to keep your back straight. Why is that? Well, first, the advice to keep your back straight is based largely off of fear-mongering with improper interpretation of data. And there's also studies showing that it may actually be impossible to keep your spine straight whenever you flex at your hips. That's right, this backgrounding, well, more specifically spine flexion, happens any time that you bend forward, whether you like it or not, and whether you're trying to stop it or not. So if it's going to happen anyway, it's probably more efficient to just embrace it and stop denying it. By denying it, all you're doing is keeping yourself weak and fragile because you have to keep lowering the weight to keep this perfect form, which is impossible anyways. Another reason that you see them round their back is because they're trying to produce as much force as possible, and then a slightly rounded position is actually a more efficient pulling position. But what makes that position more efficient? Well, to start, the main muscles working in a deadlift are the hamstrings, glutes, and the lower back. There are more muscles, but I'm not going to talk about them in this video. If you want to list them out in the comments, you're more than welcome to. For an efficient pull, we want to find a good balance between all of those muscle groups working, where one muscle group isn't a large limiting factor, and one muscle group isn't getting worked at all. So we want a good balanced approach. So how do we do that? For the glutes and hamstrings, which are the hip extensors, we want to look at the moment arm in relation to the weight. Or in other words, how far away is the weight from the hip joint, since that's one of the main axes of rotation. By decreasing that distance, you're actually putting them in a more advantageous position to overcome the weight. And rounding the back brings that bar closer to the hip joint. In addition to that, at very large angles of hip flexion, the glutes are actually in a disadvantageous position to produce force. So this means the more that you flex at your hips, the less force the glutes can produce. And a great way to decrease that hip flexion is, you guessed it, rounding your back. By doing this, you're actually shifting the pelvis posteriorly a little bit so that that relative hip flexion is smaller and the glutes are in a more advantageous position to produce force. Now, I'm sure there are some people that are just taking this way too far and are ready to straw man this argument and saying that a fully flexed spine is inefficient for pulling. I'm not saying to lift with a fully flexed spine. If you think this through, I mentioned another muscle group at the beginning, your low back. And the muscles there, the spinal erectors, are actually at a disadvantageous to produce force when there's too much rounding. They're kind of like the glutes, but you have to look at how much the back is rounding. If you round it too much, now the spinal erectors can't produce good force and they become the limiting factor. So to repeat what I said earlier, you want a balanced approach. Luckily for us, a little bit of rounding may actually be beneficial for the spinal erectors to produce force, so it's a win-win to have some back rounding. Now that you know that, how do you find the best position? Well, there isn't a blanket statement of X degrees of back rounding is the best, so you kind of have to play around with it a little bit. Everyone's built a little bit differently. They have different joint morphology, limb lengths, coordination, range of motion, positions where they're naturally strong, and so on. So if someone tells you there's a perfect way to move and that you have to be in this position to move the best, and they just simply don't know how the human body works. So like I said, you kind of have to be a bit patient and play around a little bit. Luckily, your body is good at finding where it's strong. So if you just film your sets and see where you end up when the bar breaks off the ground, you can slowly shift your starting position to more closely resemble that position. If you're always trying to be very extended and keep that neutral back, you may have a little bit too much momentum and your body might overcorrect and actually be in too much of a rounded position. So what I like to coach is just slowly adding more and more backgrounding or slowly rising your hips a little bit more until you find a position where you're comfortable. And with this, you also need to be using sufficiently heavy weight. You can move 70% pretty much however you want, but once you're getting up to 80%, 90%, the weight kind of starts to dictate where your pulling position needs to be, so you have to do this with sufficient weight. If you're not used to going that heavy all the time, then take some time with it, go slow, don't do this every single workout, and give yourself a good few weeks to get used to it. After a while, you will find that perfect starting position and your deadlifts are going to feel like butter. I have had some people comment on my back during deadlifts since I do start fairly rounded and pull with this fairly rounded back, but hey, it's helped me to pull 639 pounds, so I'm just not going to listen to them. Don't let these fear mongers ruin your gains and do what's strong and comfortable for you. Thank you for watching. I hope that you learned something. Now go out there and make some gains.